Hey guys, it's Hunter. Welcome back to another video. Alright, so coming out of this year's NAMM show, there was a lot of cool shit. Right, that's when all the new guitars and gear for the year are announced. You get to see what each brand's focus is for the upcoming year, where the industry as a whole is going. But for me, this was a particularly exciting one. If you guys have been watching the channel for a while, you know I have a huge affinity towards Epiphone. My G400 Custom was the first serious guitar that I saved my summer job money up for. It's the instrument I started learning more complicated Trivium and Lamb of God riffs on, the guitar I used to write my own own first legitimate riffs. It was my main guitar for years, and so Epiphone holds a very special place in my heart. And it was always disheartening to hear from other guitars that Epiphone wasn't always taken seriously. For a lot of people, they were cheap guitars for the ones that aspired to own but couldn't afford a proper Gibson. Well, in 2020, Epiphone is looking to change that narrative. They've basically dropped the entire existing lineup and introduced a brand new inspired by Gibson line split into original and modern collections just like the American-made counterparts with upgraded components and a new Kalamazoo headstock bringing the two closer product-wise than they've ever been. The aim essentially is the core Gibson experience at an affordable price point. Now there's something like 20 new models and I plan to get through as many of them as possible, but I figured we'd start with what I consider to be one of the most gorgeous guitars of all time, the Les Paul Custom. Now on paper, this is the guitar that I've wanted Epiphone to make for years. But as we all know, the spec sheet doesn't always tell the full story. So is the Epiphone inspired by Gibson Les Paul Custom the guitar that I've been waiting for? Let's take a closer look. Okay, so the Les Paul Custom, in my opinion, is just one of the best looking guitars that has ever been. I mean, it is just downright gorgeous. They're classy, they're timeless, they stand out without being gimmicky. They fit in with any genre of music, from metal to jazz, doesn't matter. There's a reason it's one of the most popular and oft-copied guitar shapes. 60 years ago, they basically just nailed it. Alright, so Specs comes in two classic finishes, Alpine White and Ebony, both with gold hardware. Full mahogany body, no maple cap, just like the originals. Mahogany neck, ebony fingerboard. Thank goodness, Epiphone, finally. Now, a lot of my favorite players and guitar influences play Les Paul Customs, and especially before I got my Gibson and Edwards, one of the main reasons I held off buying an Epi Les Paul Custom to mod was that fingerboard. It used to be rosewood, and on a Les Paul Custom, I don't know, anything besides ebony just looks and feels wrong. Okay, to be fair, there are exceptions. White Phenolic does look pretty dope, and Rich Light. I'm a fan of Rich Light, but that's neither here nor there. The lack of ebony was frustrating too, because while maybe it made sense years ago, for the last couple years, it seemed very much like 
artificial product differentiation, since a lot of other models out of the same facility came with Ebony. The 1955 Les Paul Custom, the Bjorn Galat Jotun. So they could do it, but it was reserved for just the special limited editions and artist models. Well, not anymore. This is now an accessible Ebony equipped Les Paul Custom that's part of the core Epiphone lineup. That's such a massive addition, not only because it now looks like a proper Les Paul Custom instead of a cheap inversion, but also the feel, which I'll get into in a second, because first we have to talk about what's going on at the end of this brand new fretboard. Obviously one of the other changes is the new old, new old headstock shape. A lot of people had strong feelings about the old headstock, specifically negative feelings. This one, they're calling it the Kalamazoo headstock. It's one they actually used before. It's the same one on my 1982 Les Paul 1. Compared to the previous one, it does look more similar to Gibson's open book headstock, but I, uh, I don't know. I want to like it. It seems like most people do, but there's something about it that just doesn't look right to me. Not a huge deal, I guess. It's just a change I was sad to see. I will concede though that while the old one looked great with binding, it did look a little strange without. The new shape works better when it doesn't have binding, like on the Les Paul Modern. Video of that to follow, I don't know, soon, maybe. Social distancing, I have been more productive, but don't hold me to any deadlines. You know how this channel works. So what I love about this updated Les Paul Custom is, well, it feels like a proper Les Paul Custom now. Obviously, it doesn't match up directly with the $5,000 Gibson Custom Shop version. Polygloss always feels more plasticky than Nitro, but for 15% the cost that you can try out at any Sam Ash or whatever, it's impressively close. Big chunky body, 12 inch fingerboard radius, 24 and 3 quarter inch scale length, 22 medium jumbo frets. But this ebony fingerboard though, it's not just a ticked box. It's a nice piece of ebony. While stained, at least I'm assuming it's stained hard, smooth, exactly as it should be. I will say this neck is kind of odd though. The website has it listed as a 60s slim taper, so it should be that thin, round shape you're familiar with if you play Gibson style instruments. When I picked this up for the first time, it was like, what the f is this D-shaped? The back of the neck is still round, but definitely kind of flat. I compared it to my Edwards and 72 Gibson just to make sure I wasn't going insane in quarantine. No, it definitely felt flatter. Maybe it's like a modern playability improvement they're trying. I don't know. I got used to it real quickly, but it did throw me off guard at first. But not as off guard as I was thrown when I found out how easy it was to use today's sponsor to get my music online. <laughs> These segues are getting worse and worse but uh, we're in too deep, we're rolling with it. So DistroKid is hands down my favorite service to get my music onto all the major online distribution platforms. Google Play, Amazon, Apple Music, Spotify, Pandora, I guess. It's just super easy. Upload a song, pick where you want it, DistroKid does the heavy lifting. There are a bunch of bonus features as well, like the ability to send credits and liner notes with your uploads to the music platform. So with other services, you can add basic metadata, song title, album title, artist name, but that's it. With DistroKid, you can add songwriters, musicians, and their instruments. Like who played Cowbell on this track? That's crucial information people might want to know. Or, you know, arguably less crucial information like links to your social media pages, booking information, lyrics to your songs. In all seriousness, that stuff is quite helpful, and at the moment you can only do that on DistroKid. So to start getting music out there, plans start at just 20 bucks a year for unlimited uploads to keep all your earnings. And if you use the link in the description, you can snag a bonus 7% off. Quality team, quality service, quality support for the online music community. And speaking of quality, a lot of the questions around this new relaunch lineup were in regards to quality. Yeah, for the most part, they're higher spec, they've got the new headstocks and that the guitarist fans have been asking for, but are they better built instruments than last year's models? And if so, by how much? And the answer is, well, in terms of quality, Epiphone's been on the rise for the past few years. Compared to when I first started playing them in the mid-2000s, they are so, so much better. Like, I love my 2006 Korean-made one, I wouldn't even consider a Chinese-made Epiphone from the same year. But this 2020 Custom, compared to what I demoed last year, at least compared to the other upper end Chinese made Epiphones, in terms of overall quality, they kind of feel the same. And I mean, that makes sense. They might've switched up the specs, but they're still made in the same factory by the same employees. And just so we're clear, that's not necessarily a knock against Epiphone. As far as the channel goes, I've had a relatively good track record when it comes to getting good ones. 2017, 2018 was actually really good with the Hafey models, the 1955 Custom, the Bjorn Galatz. Those felt fantastic. Last year though, to be honest, it was a little more hit or miss. I saw Trogli's mass Epiphone unboxing video and what he found was 
disappointing. This particular example though is quite good, at least when it comes to playability. The binding's been slightly rounded, so the fingerboard and the frets aren't sharp. They could have been polished a little better, but they aren't scratchy. It just feels great to play and how Les Paul should, so that's the good news. Now for the less good news. While the leveling is decent for the most part, the 5th, 19th, and 21st frets are slightly high. And aesthetically, there's a lot of die runoff and tool marks at the fret ends, especially higher up the fingerboard. Didn't really notice while I was playing, but I've definitely seen better on other guitars in this price range and even from Epiphone themselves. So a huge talking point this year is that Epiphone has upgraded and standardized the electronics and hardware across the entire line. Every single Epiphone now comes with Grover tuners or something of equivalent quality and a craft tech nut. Then a high quality Switchcraft toggle, CTS pots, and orange drop capacitors to match what's found in the US made Gibson counterparts. Or at least that's what they were supposed to be. Now that I've opened up the control cavity, those capacitors are definitely not the same iconic bright orange ones found in Gibson's. Maybe they're just same values or something. I do like that pseudo quick connect system though. And those are hooked up to Epiphone Pro Buckers, which are now found in all the humbucker equipped 2020 Epiphones. So I think I've been talking enough now. You've heard what it sounds like in a mix. Let's hear what it sounds like outside of one. I'm running the same signal chain as I did for the demo, Mesa Dual Rec boosted with a precision drive using Glenn Fricker's 4x12 Mesa IR for dirty, 2x12 Silver 77 IR with a Boss DM2W in the effects loop for cleans. <laughs> I've never been huge into Pro Buckers. They sound kind of muddy, but you could definitely do a lot worse. And in the past, Epiphone has. Last year's Les Paul Custom was already near the top end of Epiphone's offerings. So you already had the Grover tuners. I can't remember if you had the Graftech nut or not. Either way, they've got them now and the upgraded electronics are a massive factor. The Pro Buckers work and the controls now feel awesome. No looseness, no wiggliness, everything feels solid. So that's a full rundown, but it comes back to the initial question. Is the inspired by Gibson Les Paul Custom the guitar that I've been waiting years for Epiphone to make? And for the most part, yeah. Yeah, it is. High quality hardware, Grover tuners, Graftech nut, Gibson style electronics, finally an ebony fingerboard. And for less than 700 bucks, I can accept the minor aesthetic and fixable fret issues. Not into the pickups, but those are swappable. I'm just not sure how I feel about the neck though. The slight D shape just feels kind of weird and you can't change that. That being said, as a Les Paul guy, I still love it. I had an absolute blast playing this guitar. It's an affordable gateway into the core experience of a Les Paul Custom. It's got all the right features. It's not been artificially nerfed to upsell you to the Gibson version. And if this is an indication of the rest of the lineup, Epiphones are no longer just mod platforms. You can swap out the pickups, I probably would, but you don't have to. I would be perfectly happy just having this as is once I sorted out the frets. If you've been off Epiphone for a couple years, try one of these out. I think you'll be really pleasantly surprised how much Les Paul is here for the dollar. So if you enjoyed this video, do me a favor and hit the like button. These are just my opinions. I'd love to know what you think in the comments. Subscribe if you haven't already. It's the big red button down there and it actually really helps out. You can also hit the bell for notifications if you wanna see more of me. Thanks to Sam Ash for making this guitar available, to Luke for mixing everything and the patrons for supporting what I do. Social media, merch, and Discord server links are in the description. As always, thanks so much for watching. You've been awesome and I'll see you for the next video.